Let's see just how amusing this park is. Hey guys, Dimension Gamer 2.0 here, bringing you the Scaretastic Vidathon of the park. So this isn't a very long game, and for the most part, you just kind of move around. It's there's not a, really a whole lot to it, and the game's pretty short. Like I think it can be beaten within an hour. What kind of settings do we have? Yeah, let's go ahead and enable subtitles. In case I end up talking when they start talking. The rest we'll leave alone for now. The park is a narrative experience best played in a dark room wearing headphones. It deals with subject matter that may be disturbing to some players. During the course of play, the park may manipulate graphics. Can okay. <laughs> this game saves automatically at certain points. You don't turn or reset the PS4 while the notification is displayed. All right. Well, I'm not in a dark room, but I can kind of make this room dark. There we go. I know you guys can't really tell, but... One of these days, I, I would like to incorporate a webcam, in especially in a Scaretastic Benathon series. I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. Whoa, wow, you turned pretty fast. There is no running in this game. Now, here is something I remember, and I believe you have to do it at this part of the game. Eventually, you'll get there. <laughs> We're just leaving our son behind. <laughs> Man, it got foggy all of a sudden. It doesn't seem to be stopping us, though. Okay, that is bright when you're in a dark room. In a semi-dark room. Is it going to change? I can't leave. The mist. The, so, on my personal account, I got all the trophies for this. That was the last one I needed, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Because, like, its instructions are leave the park. Can I get this brightness off my screen? My god. And I gotta walk all the way back. Are you serious? But that was the last trophy I needed, and the uh, the information says, like, leave the park. Yeah, leave the park. See, I would have figured that you would have had to have been in the park, which is over there, and then come back out through the gate. But no, that is not the case. I don't think you can, actually. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. What? Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath. 
Think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Well, shit was supposed to stay in the car. Wait up there for mommy, Callum. Come on, mommy. Welcome to the park. This is just the kind of game where you want to spend time looking around. Callum, where are you going? There's something on, special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Let me go that way. Oh God, the park. What happened here? Yeah, see, it won't let me go any farther. Oh, now we can run. Sweet. This would have been a very long let's play. <laughs> this game can be completed in an hour. This is gonna be a long let's play if we can't. Yeah, especially because I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so here we have the park. We can see we are at the sideshow alley. It looks like. Because we can see the entrance there. Not that big of a park. Let's just kind of look around. A little hard to see because everything's all dark. <laughs> so we saw Callum run this Come way. Back. Ooh, my batteries are low. Oh. Okay, well, who's Carrie Killian? I'm not playing anymore, Callum. This way. Did he run in here? Too dark. I'm not going in there without a flashlight. Okay, so that means we have to go this way. Callum had to have run this way then. I have, obviously, since I mentioned I got all the trophies, I have played through this game once. And it would have been a couple of years ago. Um, John... Look up when you last played it. Wait, Callum. Over here. I think this belongs to Callum. You got a shoe. Chad the Chipmunk, huh? Chad the Chipmunk the welcomes you to Atlantic seat. Island. Oh. Chat can be seen in daily uh, ice sculpting shows in the following locations. 11 a.m. Sideshow Alley. 1 p.m. The Octatron. 3 p.m. Park Entrance. Chad the Chipmunk. Worst in class. Can't. Hold on. Chad the Chipmunk. Worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry. Likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Oh, well, that's kind of convenient. 
I don't think I ever noticed that last time. Restrooms. Well, we can't go in the restroom. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Over here. I like how this kid just takes off without his shoe. So we are now at the Tunnel of Tales. Callum, stay where you are. Where are you? Come on, Mommy. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife, I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is nibbling? 
at my house. An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, the opening is here, and she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove, and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. Huh! That's, a. Uh... Took a dark twist. Um, 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 hi. You know, you should always face forward when driving, buddy. Even if you are just a swan. Are all stories like that? Like that? I was never read that stuff as a kid, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't think we... No, we can't do it again. Oh, 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 God. Please tell me I'm not doing it again. Please tell me... I'M DOING IT AGAIN! Well, what's this trophy for? Because I don't really remember it. Take a ride through the tunnel of tails. Oh, no! Let me off! I don't want to hear the damn story again! No! Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. One unamused ride later. Not gonna give me the look this time, bro? Or are you not looking at me because you're unamused that I turned my sound off and played Pokemon Go that whole time? <laughs> Oh, 
All right. Note to self. Don't do that again. Next time, we're going to continue our search for Callum. Hansel and Gretel. Like we'll be, oh. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Okay. So, as I was saying, Next time, we're going to continue our search for Callum at the Octodron. See you guys then.